Chuck, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Starting to melt out there. Starting it's to getting melt a little out there. warmer. First warmer day we've had in a while. Yeah, I think in a week or so we're going to be able to resume work on the boat. Right now, the boat is covered in snow and ice. Um, and there's still snow on the ground. It snowed, snowed yesterday. We got snow in the, in the forecast, right? Yep. In another couple of days, temp has uh, been up to 36 today. Yeah. But snow in a couple more days. We are so ready to get working on this again. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this over again. Make it all nice and new. I was just going to paint it, but I think I'll make a new one. That's uh, what the anchor mounts so the on on the bow. Goes across the pulpit where we hang the uh, the claw anchor over. And what do you need to redo about it? Oh, I'm just going to make a new one. Ah. It's, oh, yeah, yeah, it's gone. I didn't. Uh, well, the wood is maybe okay, but we didn't seal it or anything. I just took a bare dowel and wrapped it and then painted it. This time I'll take a, a dowel, a slightly heavier dowel, and um, maybe inch and a quarter. And uh, first I'll treat it with the uh, where is it? with the penetrating resin and then I'll wrap it and paint it and do all that stuff. I was looking at the I was looking at a logbook going back maintenance on the, this boat is an ongoing thing. I started it back in uh, well the first entry here and this April is our first. this is our logbook. This is our logbook. Okay. Yeah. So the first entry April 1st 1990 Bought the boat for fifteen thousand dollars. That included the haul out the owner paid for it. So, and it's got the whole history here of, of everything we've done to the boat. It's all entered in the logbook right up until uh, the last entry here is where is it? January 29th at the boat show. We bought e flares bought and some new flares. LED lighting. Yeah, very yeah. cool. That's what maintenance has looked like over the past 27 years, living aboard and cruising in a 27-foot production fiberglass sailboat. Now we can relay to everybody what that looks like over time. You figure, most people just figure, you know, get an annual haul out, however much that's going to cost to haul the boat out, slap a coat of bottom paint on it, put it back in the water. Um, but we have a record over all, you know, 27 years of ownership we have now. The never-ending story of maintaining Leilea began on April 1st, 1990, and it's still going on. Um, the first weekend in May, we hauled out for the first time, had a survey, and began the maintenance journey. That first haul out, all we did was, um, Rick, the previous owner, after we got out of the water, he showed there was no repairs to the hull and that the boat was sound below the water line. We checked the cutlass bearing, the rudder, the stuffing box, sanded and repainted the bottom, and put it back in the water. Just your basic, uh, just your basic annual haul out. One of the first things I did was replace the lifelines with new coated wire and crimp fittings. My first boat do-it-yourself project. In, uh, in 92, I replaced the battery. Yeah, back then it was just a single Sears Die Hard regular lead acid deep cycle marine battery. It cost about six, well, it cost exactly $65. I also had new awnings made and contracted with a diver for bottom cleaning every three months at $100 annual rate. And I bought new rugs for the cabin. Late that year, the original Volvo engine succumbed to salt water, sucked into the exhaust. And I sailed her sans engine until July of 1994, when I finally had the money to replace the motor. All out, bottom paint, new engine installed by Alawai Marine, ran $7,725, and it took five months to complete the job. In 1996, guess who came aboard? It was <laughs> Laura. I don't have that in the logbook, but I know the date. Uh, we started replacing and upgrading compasses, VHF, GPS, bilge pump, oil lamps, and a new pulpit. <laughs> There's a story, our first sailing date. Um, in 97, Leilea got a complete new paint job. Pettit Trinidad blue bottom paint, all grip two-part epoxy from the water line up. And during that haul out, she also got new standing and running rigging and new running lights, plus a new cockpit hatches and companionway slides and boards, courtesy of my best friend, J. 
Jesse Woods. By 1998, a guest had snapped off the stern-mounted whip antenna for the VHF, so we replaced it with a masthead unit. And while the mast was down, we noticed the spreader bases needed replacing, so we had new ones fabricated at Alawai Marine. A new mainsail and working jib, and another new set of running rigging came in October of that year. You see a pattern here? <laughs> Laura was making Leilea into a more suitable home. Would you say that's the case, Laura? Were you making it into a more suitable home? It was a bachelor pad before I showed oh, up. True, it was. And all it needed was a woman's touch. <laughs> new carpets, new cushions, new curtains, a new cook stove, and another set of new awnings with an improved design for more privacy. By 2004, we were beginning to prepare the boat for serious cruising. Laura got a job at West Marine, and we took full advantage of the generous employee discounts to outfit Lea Lea with additional upgrades and more equipment. We replaced the single lead acid battery with three AGMs, uh, with one dedicated to engine starting and two for house power, and had a new electrical panel made, replacing the old fuses with circuit breakers. We continued adding and upgrading equipment, and in 2006 we got a video camera and started recording some of what we were doing to prepare for cruising. In 2007 it was a very busy year. We installed water maker, wiring and fittings for the tiller pilot, mounted a radar reflector, replaced the running rigging. We had reef points uh, put in our mainsail and replaced the porta potty. Just prior to departing Hawaii, we hauled out and replaced the zinc anode and all the through hull fittings and the old gate valves with proper ball valve seacocks. Put two coats of Pettit Trinidad blue on the bottom, serviced the engine, and replaced the batteries again. We wanted to replace the large windows in the main cabin and add a dodger, but the prices in Hawaii were just too high, so we went without them. We were as prepared as we could be for our first Pacific crossing, wouldn't you think? We felt we were prepared enough. We thought we were prepared enough. More or less. We thought we were prepared. Well, we made it we across, we were, didn't we? <laughs> we were prepared. We were we prepared enough. <laughs> we, were, we were prepared. We were ready. We just weren't ready. We were ready. We were ready. I don't know. We made it, didn't we? We made it, yeah. We, we learned were, yeah, we is... were we learned we had a lot to learn. We were as prepared as we could be for our first Pacific crossing. I think that's a, that's a fair enough statement. That's what it says in the script. Um, and we we learned a lot on that first trip, no denying. We learned a lot on that first trip. The tiller pilot failed on the third day out, which forced us to figure out an alternative self steering system. Uh, we carried too much stuff. The boat was overloaded and poorly ventilated. The 316 stainless steel wire we had used to replace the original standing rigging turned out to be defective and began to fail halfway across the ocean. That forced us to slow down, shortening sail to ease the strain on the rig. What should have been a 30 or 35 day passage took 55 days and when we arrived at Nia Bay we immediately started planning a refit. From Nia Bay, we made our way uh, first to Port Angeles because we thought we might do it there, right? We thought we might be able to do it at Port Angeles, but then when we saw the facilities at Port Angeles, we decided to push on to Port Townsend. And we made our way to Port Townsend, hauled out at the Port Townsend Boat Haven Boatyard, where we set about applying the lessons we had learned. Laura got a job at the nearby West Marine store, which helped with industry contacts and discounts on equipment and supplies. The Port Townsend Shipwrights Co-op helped with interior modifications and a new polycarbonate windows, providing skilled labor and advice, as well as workshop space and shop tools. How's it going? It's going well. How many holes do we have left? How many do we have left? Uh, two, four, six. How many holes did we start with? We got about, got about 50. 54 holes more to go on this piece. <laughs> How many holes are 68 there? 68 holes per window. 68 holes per window. That's every two inches. Every two inches, yeah. Every two inches. That's why I'm, I'm doing this myself rather than paying Bennett to do it. Shipwrights co op skilled laborers, and their rate is fair, but you don't need to be that skilled to drill 62 holes. 68 holes. 68 holes. Per window. 
no, I think I can handle this. This is uh, not much above, you know, seventh grade wood shop. So. our new windows. Ben Hoffman from the Shipwrights Co-op uh, made patterns from the old windows and cut them out of a sheet of 3 8 inch polycarbonate. And then I drilled the holes in them with the drill press over at the Shipwrights Co-op. And Ben and I installed them. They look pretty good. And you may also notice our new Dodger up there, made by uh, Port Townsend Canvas, custom made for us by a young lady named Leah. Dan and Lisa at Port Townsend Rigging helped with replacing our standing rig, generously allowing us to use their shop and to do some of the work ourselves. Then Dan checked our work when we were finished. We had a new stem fitting fabricated at one of the machine shops in the yard. While we were hauled out, we improved ventilation in the boat and rolled on another coat of bottom paint. The last thing we did while in Port Townsend was make up new lifelines of polyester rope before heading to Friday Harbor. Good morning, honey. Hello. We're going to Friday Harbor at last. Yay. Yay. <laughs> We're out of four towns, and as much as I love that place, I was ready to get out of there. <laughs> All right. We are a beautiful day. After a week's worth of gale warnings, we finally got a clear day. Actually, it's supposed to pick up again this evening, I think. But uh, I think we got a, a good window, so worth the wait. Yay. It's going to be really pretty. Was performing wonderfully. And all our changes, all our changes, uh, modifications are working out great. And holds that we added are great. Our Dodger, it's just wonderful. And, uh, everything's working out just fine. So we'll talk to you again when we get to Friday Harbor. While in Friday Harbor. We used a friend's workshop to fabricate new exterior handrails and repair and refinish the cockpit hatch lids. At the end of 2009, we relocated to Shilshoal Bay Marina in Seattle, where Laura worked at the Shilshoal Bay West Marine Store. By spring 2010, we were getting ready to sail back to the tropics and hauled Lea Lea for a coat of bottom paint and one new through-hull fitting in Seacock. We replaced the VHF radio with a new combination VHF AIS receiver. The masthead tricolor light had taken a bird hit and had broken in half, so we replaced it with a new LED unit. Then one evening coming in from a day sale, the engine died going into the slip. So what did we discover, Chuck? Well, yesterday we were checking the engine, getting prepared for our uh, trip to Alaska, and discovered that we probably have a blown head gasket because there's oil in the uh, heat exchange. So, we called up Captain Wendell, and he's towing us over to the boat yard. We're going to pull the engine out. And yeah, we're going to pull 
pull the engine out and have their uh, mechanic over there take a look at it for us. Hey, it's March 16th, 2010. Six weeks before we're supposed to be setting sail for Alaska. Yesterday we were checking the engine, getting ready to do an engine service on it, and we discovered oil in the heat exchanger. Called in a mechanic. Says it looks like a blown head gasket. So today we are aboard the now engineless sloop, Lea Lea, having pulled the engine a, an hour ago. And uh, now we're waiting to get hauled out where we'll uh, paint bottom, check our zincs, change out uh, one seacock, and cap off one through hole. And uh, then we'll be back in the water and, we hope, ready for departure. But we'll have to update you on that after we get the boat out of the water. Pass me the big hammer, will ya? The big one or the really big one? The really big one. How's it going, Chuck? Yeah, well, could be better, could be better. You know, being rained on while trying to get the packing nut out. Uh, <clears throat> add that to the bad news from the uh, diesel mechanic this morning. Don't get the Popeye squint. <laughs> mm. All right, so here it is. Um, the engine um, is not quite toast, but it's in questionable shape. So what we've done is we've had it uh, disassembled and inspected, and the head has been sent off to be reconditioned. We think we can get away with just honing the cylinders and replacing the rings uh, and the big end bearings and that should do it, we think. But we're waiting for word back from the machine shop. They're checking everything for us. We're also going to have the injectors rebuilt and um, the probably the valve guides replaced and the valves um, recut and the seats recut or possibly replaced. So we do, we're waiting to find out what it's going to cost us and that's going to determine how we uh, proceed from here on. But looks like it was caused by a faulty installation of the engine when we replaced the engine in 1994. And so, 16 years later, we suffer the consequences of uh, questionable installation. So, uh, we're going to have to go through all that. The, uh, the exhaust system is going to have to be uh, retrofitted, removed, replaced, properly installed, and uh, the engine put back in its place and after having been reconditioned. But we'll it lasted 16 years. But it lasted 16 years. I mean, can't complain too much about it. And we'll do it better this time and everything will be great. You found the camera! Yay! With the completely rebuilt engine back in the boat, we bought a storm jib at Ballard Sales and set off down the coast. In San Francisco, we did little more than touch up the bright work, but marina rules placed limitations on the maintenance we were allowed to do there. The boat was in fine shape at that point, however, 
So we set off for Hawaii with confidence. Once we got back to Hawaii, we swapped out the old running lights for LED units and did some small repairs below decks. We ordered a new 130% Genoa from Art Nelson Sailmakers in Honolulu, which we put to good use on our trip north to Alaska. Now, after several seasons of living aboard and cruising in the islands of southeast Alaska, Leolea is once again in need of a major refit. Much of the original interior wood is showing signs of rot and wear. The rig is nearing the end of its safe and useful lifespan. Her working sails are worn. Lifelines need replacing again. The hull's 20-year-old paint is looking a little shabby. And it won't hurt to rebed all the stanchions and deck fittings. That sounds expensive, Chuck. How much does this all actually all cost? Um, well, it is expensive. And there's a lot of big dollar items on this list. But um, I've, heard, I've heard that the, the rule of thumb is that you should... Uh, expect to spend 10% of the purchase price of the boat on maintenance each year. And for us, it's worked out, that's about right. I spent $15,000 to buy the boat. And uh, the actual, I, I checked this a couple of years back. It's actually worked out to about $100 a month is what I've always put aside, $100 a month for maintenance. Um, but of course, this, this last refit, which is much more than just maintenance, uh, it's well, going to push us over. building a 43-year-old boat. Yeah. Uh, but 10%, 10 uh, per, per year is about right. $15,000, you know, um, $1,500 a year. I've been working on a $1,200 per year. Um, it's about right. So if you want a rule of thumb of how much it's going to cost you to maintain a boat over a long period of time, I think 10% of the purchase price is, is, sounds about right to me. I mean, unless you've got something where you got it for nothing, you know, uh, the going rate for a Vega nowadays is about still about $15,000. And you can expect to maintain one. I think the most expensive we've seen was, what, 30 25 Actual sale, about 20 I don't think I've seen one go for more than 20 <laughs> even with a trailer. Well, there you go. So we should be able to get back to work next week. Uh, can't quite get the temperature in here up to 60 degrees yet. Uh, snow and ice on the ground, more snow in the forecast, but it's definitely getting warmer. I'm hoping by next weekend we'll be uh, rolling right along again. It'll only take two days of good weather to get rid of all the snow and ice. So we're optimistic. Woohoo! <laughs>